Oh, we are live. Uh, finally, uh, sorry, uh, 15 minutes after the hour, uh, lots of technical issues. Um, the virtual IoT um, meetup is great when we have uh, one speaker. It's uh, kind of easy to to uh, to, to organize and uh, to to uh, to fix any technical issues. When we have three participants like we have today, it's a bit more challenging. But we are live. Finally, um, I'm actually going to make sure. Um, we tell our uh, audience on Twitter, um, which I just did. So thanks for joining. Uh, we are actually very excited to um, um, to share um, uh, with you guys what's been happening uh, during the second edition of the Open IoT Challenge. Uh, you may remember the first edition uh, um, in early 2015, and we did the second edition at the end of last year, uh, and it actually ended at the end of uh, February. Uh, the idea was that uh, we wanted um, developers to build open and innovative IoT solutions, uh, open as in based on open source technologies. As you may know, uh, we at Eclipse are strong believers in, in open source, so um, we wanted people to use um, some of the Eclipse IoT projects or um, open source projects in general, which they did, and they had a couple a couple weeks, couple months to work on their solution. Uh, and today we've invited the winners, uh, the three winners of the um, of the challenge. So uh, the grand winner is a team um, in India uh, with Arun and Mahavir. Their project is called IoT by India. Uh, so unfortunately, we still have technical issues. So they might be joining us later. Uh, but I can't guarantee it, unfortunately. Uh, their project is about monitoring, um, doing healthcare, uh, remote healthcare sort of solutions using sensors, etc. Uh, you can actually monitor your um, uh, your health and your heart rate and whatnot, and send that directly to the doctor uh, using a Raspberry Pi and lots of cool open hardware. So uh, hopefully they will join us later and um, uh, give us an update on that and what they used, uh, what kind of technology they used, where to find the source code, etc. Then um, number two is Philippe Charrier. Uh, the project is called Ata. And um, it's something that's actually very useful um, and still missing in the IoT uh, uh, puzzle, um, if, if I may, um, which is about testing IoT solutions. How do you simulate um, IoT sensors, IoT endpoints, like um, you have sensors talking about uh, over co-op or over MQTT, how do you simulate them? So that's the point of his project. So he's going to give us a quick update on that. Um, so welcome, Philippe. And uh, then the um, the third team uh, has uh, a very cool demo, a very complete demo using lots of technology, uh, computer vision, and, um, and models for doing um, uh, um, analysis of uh, of basically IoT models for doing uh, again um, a simulation and, and verifying the, the the behavior of uh, of IoT systems like a, a train uh, or a, a robot and you want to make sure that uh, you don't uh, end up in in, in um, uh, states that uh, are basically um, abnormal so that's uh, that's the third part and I'm looking forward to to get a demo of that one as well we uh, we were going through um, some videos and screen screencasts that just before going live and um, it's really exciting stuff so um, how about we start with project in uh, in um, number two uh, which is uh, Philips the, the the project is called ATA so Philippe again welcome and why don't you um, uh, spend a uh, some time to to walk us through the project and uh, if anyone on the hangouts has any questions a good way to ask them would be Twitter virtual IoT hashtag you can also comment uh, on the page or on the Google plus um, event if, if you'd like please make sure to um, yeah to send uh, all the questions you may have, technical or not, to um, our participants today uh, to understand better what uh, their projects are about. So, Philippe? Yes. Uh, so I start? Sure. OK. Um, hello, uh, hello, everybody. Um, ah. Do you see my, my slide? I can't hear you. Uh, sure, I wasn't good. <laughs> um, we uh, see slide number one, so I'm not yes, sure that's what. Uh, it's, uh, wait. Uh, okay. 
It's okay. Uh, right, hello, right. everybody. I am uh, Philippe Charrier. I am a pre-sales uh, engineer and technical evangelist, and uh, I am a French guy, so uh, excuse me for my uh, bad English. You can follow me uh, at the handle at uh, k33j underscore org, and uh, if you want to ask uh, some questions uh, after, you, you, you can ping me uh, at this. Uh, so, what is ATA? Uh, ATA is a kind uh, of simulator of uh, connected devices and connected gateways. I add this need because of two things. Uh, I often do workshop uh, about IoT, but uh, often without uh, connected things. Uh, it's very difficult to have um, an Arduino for everybody, for example, or Raspberry Pi. And uh, the second point, uh, I haven't any tools to test platforms like uh, something uh, like Siteware or Thingworks platform and uh, my own tools. So I decided to write a kind of DSL, a little bit like uh, Gatling. This is a Gatling. Uh, this is a stress tool for web application written with Scala. Um, I wanted something simple that can, uh, that I can use with um, other Java frameworks like uh, Pao framework, for example. Then uh, I choose to use a gro groovy language. Um, now I'm going to present uh, you the, the main features of uh, ATA framework or ATA uh, DSL. ATA is a tool that can help you to define your own virtual sensors and uh, virtual gateways. For example, ATA provides templates to simply describe, in Groovy of course, a, a sensor. You have only two things to do. You have uh, to uh, extend uh, the template sensor and after override the generate data method that calculates some values uh, and override a kind of getter to get some data from uh, the, the, the defined sensor. Uh, so ATA provides some models ready to use. Um, I choose to use groovy traits because uh, it's an easy way to add abilities to sensors or uh, gateways without using uh, inheritance. Here you can see a temperature trait and uh, after I can use I can use it to create my, uh, my own sensor and of course um, a sensor can use several traits for for his uh, properties or abilities or method and treatment. The second feature of ATA is the possibility to define um, a gateway, uh, a gateway has some properties and a list of sensors. Here I've created a MQTT gateway. I use Pao framework for that, but uh, I, you can create with ATA, um, you can define with ATA uh, COAP uh, gateways and uh, for that I use California project. So uh, here you can you can see uh, that the, the definition of the gateway is very simple and uh, you can add uh, almost any property uh, you want to use. Uh, after the gateway has a start method in which uh, you can define some treatment and especially the notification of sensors to get calculated data. Uh, here uh, you can see that uh, every two seconds the gateway notifies uh, its sensors to, to get some data and after the gateway publishes um, data of sensors uh, on, a, on a specifically topic. Uh, here uh, this is the home sensors topic and uh, it uses uh, MQTT messages to, to publish that. Um, I have had some uh, logging features to the gateways that uh, provide the abilities to create log files, uh, to query the data of uh, gateways and sensors gateway with uh, REST API, uh, API sorry, um, 
and to stream data of gateways and sensors gateway with server sense events. Then you can stream the data to your browser. To develop the REST API, API and uh, server sent events uh, streaming, uh, I have used uh, Vertix. Uh, and um, I use Vertix 2 to, to, to make the, the, the timers uh, in, the, in the treatment with uh, the gateways. Uh, the um, logging feature is very simple to use. Huh? You have to define a supervisor and uh, you define which gateway uh, is uh, supervised and then uh, you, you can start the, to log the, the, the message and uh, apply, up, update the, the log file uh, when you need. Uh, something that will be interesting about ATA will be the, interop the, the interoperability. Potentially, the ATA jar can be used with other JVN languages. I've already done some experiments with Golo language, uh, another tiny language for the JVM, uh, which is uh, based on Invoke Dynamic. Uh, but it's um, a work in progress because the closure implementation is different between Groovy and Java 8. Uh, so I have to develop some uh, helpers to, 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 to help to use it uh, with another langu language uh, than, uh, than Groovy. Uh, about the future of uh, ATA, I plan uh, different things for ATA. Um, like uh, these things. Uh, I have to improve the COAP gateway because uh, it was too simple. Uh, I plan to add a HTTP gateway to, to make a, a REST, uh, REST call. Uh, of course, documentation. Uh, I have to improve interoper interoperability. Uh, I am developed a sister project with uh, only Golo because uh, it is very light language uh, in memory and uh, it could be very interesting uh, uh, to run it uh, on a Raspberry, for example. And uh, I plan to write more complex samples to use uh, ATA and uh, perhaps a little IoT platform. So uh, I was a little bit short, but uh, thank you for attention. And uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, it's no, or you you can easily reach me at um, key33j underscore org. Thank you. Very cool. Um, thanks uh, for the for the presentation of the project. Um, I'm not sure. Um, did you can can you maybe open the, the link to your uh, GitHub repo? I'm not sure you you shared that. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, it was there. Okay. It, um, yeah. You can see it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, are there also other? Um, do you have in mind to add support for um, other protocols like uh, I don't know maybe like to M two M and or um, would that make sense to try and support uh, um, yeah, other protocols, like um, not necessarily purely transport protocols, but emulating, um, I don't know, ZigBee endpoints or DLE centers? Would that be um, something you think would be useful and, and or possible? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, ZigBee could have a, a place in the project, but uh, I have to refactor uh, s s uh, a lot of things to uh, to be sure that the the the, the, mentabili the mentability and the evolution uh, evol 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 ah I can say it um, the, the 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 facility to 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 add uh, more feature in the the future. Uh, but um, yes, uh, I um, I have to work to, to about this. But uh, uh, for the moment, uh, I don't know uh, all the, the the protocol, and uh, I have to study uh, them. So did you get um, did you get some uh, pull requests already, or um, any any feedback on, on the project? No, not for the moment. 
Okay. I think uh, perhaps it's too soon because uh, uh, I uh, already uh, seen uh, some um, uh, refactoring uh, about um, some some class, uh, especially to the about interoperability and uh, MQ, MQTT gateway uh, that uh, became uh, very complex uh, with the time, and uh, I have to simplify this. So let me see if I uh, if I have any questions on Twitter. I don't think I see any questions. But uh, if you're watching us and your I mean people are definitely watching us, um, despite the fact we started very late. And uh, sorry again. Uh, if you think of any questions for Philippe, uh, um, you still have time, of course, during the um, the, the second presentation that that's going to come in in just a few minutes. So feel free to uh, to send the questions uh, using the virtual IoT hashtag on Twitter or um, send them on Meetup. Um, so yeah, thank you, Philippe. Um, so yeah, the, the the link to the, the GitHub repo is um, uh, is displayed right now. I hope uh, many of you guys will have a look. Um, maybe one um, option for you, Philippe, would also be to. But I know you're very busy these days. But if um, uh, if you want to get some feedback, maybe you want uh, you may want to post on the um, Eclipse IoT uh, mailing list, so as uh, people from Paho from California. I get a chance to to have a look. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I really like the fact that the the framework is very uh, lightweight. So um, hopefully, many. Um, although, I mean, of course, you want to improve the documentation, but hopefully, people are really interested uh, uh, don't really need um, uh, the, the documentation. So I plan to write uh, some uh, tutorials, and uh, after I think uh, I can't uh, talk about it uh, on uh, on mailing list. All right, so should we um, switch to Istvan and Andras? Hello, guys. Or hello, Istvan. Hello. I think you're only one. Hello, how are you? Absolutely ready to present. Uh, awesome. So, um, yeah, as I was uh, telling earlier, um, there seems to be some uh, very cool demos uh, from, from your side. So the uh, the short name of the project is, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I think you spell it uh, Modest 3, as in um, uh, model based um, MO demonstrator DE um, uh, S for smart and safe systems. So, um, uh, triple S. Um, so, yeah. why don't you tell us more about what you've been building during the Open IoT Challenge? I think it's in actually two projects that you guys uh, built, uh, but they are um, uh, interrelated, uh, sort of. They're based on on um, some common technologies, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my name is Andra Shorosh, and with my colleague Ishmarat, we will uh, tell. Uh, about uh, model-based demonstrator for smart and safe systems. So what is the goal of our project? So uh, traditional safety critical, uh, safety critical systems uh, apply model-based development. Uh, various validation and verification techniques uh, are used. Uh, code generation uh, are uh, applied. And uh, also uh, many, many safety requirements are against uh, the uh, the systems and on the other side there are uh, the so-called cyber physical systems where we have various information sources from sensors and they are inherently heterogeneous so there are embedded computer sensors and also cloud computing is applied and our uh, demonstrator is a combination of both words so we used development techniques from the safety critical uh, domain and we combined them with technologies from a uh, cyber physical domain. So it's kind of a mixed critical uh, system. So let's start with a video just uh, uh, introducing uh, the working. Do you see it? Hopefully. Yes. OK. So this is a short introduction of, uh, of our project. Uh, so you can see the first steps when we developed the distributed logic and it is tested in, uh, in the cloud. Uh, we have also 
this uh, robot which is responsible for moving, lifting and uh, moving objects from and onto the trains and in the next video you will see how computer vision uh, helped the robot control So you're using OpenCV, right? Yeah, yeah. I will discuss it uh, more detail. It's just uh, the physical, the working of the physical system. So, uh, and it it also handles human intervention. So if I just take my hand there, it just stops successfully. And the main purpose was to develop safety logic, which stops the trains. So when they reach the uh, same section, the same part, the safety logic will stop the trains. And uh, just a short video about the high-level monitoring based on complex event processing. So you can see that we used computer vision uh, and we also developed a client to depict what happens uh, in the system. So it is on the left side. So let's go a little bit into the details. So we have a robot system for moving and removing objects, and we also have a railway system for transportation. So this is the high-level overview. Uh, in the middle, you can see the hardware, and uh, on the bottom, uh, you can see the distributed safety logic uh, for ensure the safety of the railway system and uh, above the uh, system we have a monitoring and control uh, logic. So let's start with the railway system where we have uh, various sensors and actuators. So we built uh, this, uh, uh, this small system with uh, 15 sensors responsible for sensing the trains and estimating their locations. We have also six embedded controllers, actuators. Uh, you can see the bottom of, uh, of this uh, system where uh, you can see these uh, embedded controllers. Actually, these are uh, beagle uh, bone uh, boards, and we used six of them responsible for, parts, for uh, ensuring the safety at certain parts of the system. And we developed a distributed safety logic uh, with the help of uh, the Yakindu state chart tools. We developed validation techniques with the help of VRTrack query, uh, which helped to ensure the correctness of the safety logic. We also developed uh, verification techniques based on model transformations to uh, verify the correctness of the individual components of the system. And we used code generation uh, from the Yakindi state chart tools to uh, produce the implementation. So each implementation uh, was deployed into a dedicated uh, uh, controller uh, which was responsible for a track section and it controlled it. Uh, and we used various IoT technologies for communication like Eclipse, PAHO, Mosquito uh, to establish the communication between the components. Uh, so let's go further. Let's uh, continue with the monitoring and control system. We implemented an additional level of safety with the help of a high-level monitoring system. We used computer vision, so we deployed a camera system on top of uh, this small uh, of, of this table, and uh, we used uh, this MQTT technology and sent this information to a monitoring comp um, component based on uh, complex event processing. And we specified the requirements uh, in the VIATRA event processing language. Uh, this requirement was to shut down the whole system in case of dangerous situation. We compiled these rules. We 
produced the monitoring logic, which was then executed uh, with the help of uh, this Viatra CEP. C -A -C -E -P. So uh, we deployed all this logic into the cloud, and we use various open source technologies, for example, Nordred, to establish uh, the communication and the configuration in a model-based uh, manner. So let's continue with the robot system, where we, where the goal was to move, remove objects from the trains. So place onto other, other trains or place onto the ground these objects uh, which was uh, which were transported, and we also developed this control logic uh, with model-based tools, we generated the implementation and uh, we used actually the sensor information and computer vision techniques to provide feedback to the controller and to ensure the, uh, the safety and actually ensure that uh, it just uh, uh, do what we want, uh, defined in the control logic. So, uh, actually, the goal of this demonstrator is to apply it in the education in various courses. So, we, try, we plan to apply it in our cyber physical systems course, in uh, model based system design course, in system modeling, and in also in our formal methods uh, course. And also, also, I have to mention that our team is mainly built from uh, students. So our, uh, there are two MSc and seven BSc students in uh, our uh, team. And we also plan to apply it in our research at the fault tolerance systems research group and the MTA BME research group on cyber physical systems. And we also had some uh, indent uh, sponsors uh, Inquiry Labs, LTD, Quanopt LTD, and Ericsson. And just to summary our work, uh, the use technologies, uh, actually in this complex case study, we applied uh, about 20 uh, different technologies from the open source world. And thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks. That's definitely a, a huge list of, um, of, of projects that, that you used. Um, so let me uh, see if there are any questions. I think I just saw actually a, um, a tweet. What are um, the next steps for, for your project? It, it, by the way, um, the, um, uh, um, are some of the, the, the pieces of the, of the project open source? Um, in fact, uh, all, all of the components are open source. Yes. Okay. And so, do you um, do you think it's easy for for anyone to actually replicate the the exact uh, hardware setup? Um, well, the hardware is actually, I think, more difficult to replicate than the the software itself. Yeah. Uh, because you, it it's a, it's a rather complex system, as you might have seen from the photos. Yeah. But we plan to to produce some comprehensive documentation, at least for the most critical parts. So if there is anyone interested, then we can turn it into a sort of open hardware project as well. Because, because uh, we believe that there is a lot of opportunity, uh, especially uh, for educational purposes. OK. Um, so there, there is a question from uh, Julien on Twitter. Um, some of the technologies you used, like uh, Node-RED and MQTT, Mosquito, maybe OpenCV, uh, do you think they are uh, actually safe for uh, building a safety system? Uh, and if they are not, are there um, better technologies, or is there anything that could be improved in terms of uh, using different protocols, using different uh, brokers, different uh, um, programming environments? Yeah, this is actually a very good question, and this is basically the, the most important uh, research question of mixed criticality systems, whether you can assemble something which is safe from components that are inherently unsafe, such as the open source technologies that you, you mentioned. And this design is basically meant to illustrate uh, how such a system can be designed, where you combine, um, let's say, uh, rather conservative uh, technologies with uh, state-of-the-art IoT technologies, and you use uh, validation and verification techniques, uh, which are not necessarily detailed in this short presentation, in order to to uh, 
verify that uh, that uh, individual components as well as the system as a whole uh, you know fulfills uh, safety requirements okay and do you actually provide a a way to model the um, um, the actual underlying um, network and the I guess the internet itself in that um, um, part of the um, the, the safety is that you want your your queries to uh, to to reach a server in, in a given uh, um, time or the way so it's, it's it's too late right so is is this part of the the world solution to model that world uh, aspect yeah it's actually not uh, highlighted that much in this presentation but the the goal of uh, choosing uh, state charts as the modeling language and yakindu as a tool specifically was exactly to have a, a, a very concise and formal way of capturing the essential operations of the system. And these, uh, these models were in fact not only used for code generation, but also for uh, uh, verification purposes. So we used uh, some um, you know, formal uh, methods tools to, to verify the safety properties of the system. We plan to, to produce some, some papers on this topic in the near future, so if there is anyone interested, uh, we would be glad to share the, share the details. Okay, cool. Um, so I think, well, there I don't see um, other questions for you guys uh, for now, uh, but while you were doing the presentation, um, the question came for, for, uh, for Philippe. The, um, the, um, yeah, what's the difference if you if you have uh, um, something to to say about that with uh, between ATA and what you've been building and um, existing open source uh, network simulators like NS3, which I think I think has been around for for many years. Uh, my I, my guess is that maybe it's not uh, well suited for for IoT and and or that you wanted to try something different, Philip. Uh, yes, um, ATA is not a network simulator. Uh, it is rather uh, oriented protocol like uh, MQTT, COAP, uh, or HTTP protocol, and uh, its uh, real aim is to s uh, simulate uh, real objects or um, physical objects. Uh, its uh, specificity is to be uh, augmented uh, easily with Groovy or another JVM language. So on the right hand, you can define uh, real use cases as uh, connected animals, uh, smart home, etc. And uh, on the other hand, you can augment the DSL with new features. And um, another thing, you can script your own application, if it is a Java application, uh, like uh, provisioning a lot of objects uh, at the start of the project. So the it, uh, it, is, it is more, uh, uh, ATA is more uh, here to mimic uh, uh, physical uh, world uh, than uh, a network uh, yeah, or a simulator or test uh, simulator. I see. Um, and by the way, speaking of extensibility, uh, I think many people uh, still use um, uh, Apache J meter for um, for testing uh, uh, for doing load testing and stuff like that. Would that make sense to try and bridge ATA to uh, and provide it as a, a plugin basically for for J meter? Um, and do you think that would be uh, easy to do? Uh, I think it's a very good idea, uh, but I don't know if uh, it's easy to uh, it's easy to do. Uh, I, I think uh, about this, uh, um, and uh, perhaps it's uh, more easier to do with uh, something uh, like uh, Getling because uh, this is already a DSL. But I don't know. Perhaps there is a DSL for Gmeter, but I, I'm not sure. But it's a, it's a good uh, good point. Yeah, I'm not sure either about the DSL. It's uh, it might be a bunch of XML files in the end. I, I, yeah, I just don't. Um, so let me see if uh, we have other questions either on meetup.com or on Twitter. Um, in any case, thanks so much uh, to uh, to the presenters for taking the time to, um, to walk us through what they, they've built. Uh, I think you will agree that it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. So um, I hope you will consider 
um, well, and by you I mean both the presenters and um, uh, the attendees, that you will consider entering the next edition of the Open IoT Challenge, which I hope will be um, um, uh, soon. Uh, it's probably going to be um, sometime uh, um, at the end of this year, I, I, I would guess. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't uh, figure out how to uh, have the IoT Vaidia team on the Hangouts. It looks like the uh, their um, the firewall in their school is basically blocking Google Hangouts. So what we will try and do is uh, record a um, another session. Um, it might not be a live session, or if it is, um, um, it might be at a, a random time. Uh, but at least it will be recorded, and uh, you will get a, a chance to see the the project live. Um, yeah, let's see. Maybe we will uh, try and make it at a. A convenient time, so as a, if uh, you guys want to want to join, you'll you'll be uh, most welcome. And uh, with that, maybe I can uh, very quickly uh, share my screen and show you what we have uh, for you in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we will actually be um, talking again uh, next week for um, a meetup about resin.io. Let me quickly share my. Um, my meetup uh, page here. So um, as as always, uh, we um, we and I encourage you guys to to review the group uh, on meetup.com. Um, do you like it? Uh, do you think the format for the presentation is good? Uh, would you like to see different topics? Uh, would you like to uh, see um, meetups more often, less often? Um, yeah, any any uh, suggestions or. Uh, uh, feedback on the group, feel free to, to, to comment. And um, if you haven't already, uh, you may want to, um, to RSVP for the upcoming sessions. Uh, as I said, one is next Wednesday, uh, same uh, time, with the resin.io resin folks. They have a very nice solution for doing remote management of uh, of um, of devices, um, and with uh, yeah very nice features for rollback in case of issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm also very much looking forward to uh, the presentation on April the 20th with uh, Camille from the MQTT Spy project. It's a, a nice JavaFX based tool for um, MQTT. Um, uh, Debugging basically, so you can visualize your MQTT topics as well as uh, create simulation scenarios. You can create charts, you can um, store data, MQTT um, data flows, and uh, replay them uh, later on. It's very, very complete. So, Camille will be uh, giving us a very um, uh, basically the full overview of the, of the MQTT spy features. So that's what we have in stock. Uh, well, I think we actually have more. We just need to announce them, and we'll we'd be happy to have you as well if you have uh, some cool projects you're working on. Please let us know. Um, and yeah, in the meantime, go check out what's what's been built during the Open IoT Challenge. The website is iot.eclipse.org/openiotchallenge. Uh, Google is your friend, I guess. Um, any questions on the projects? Uh, I think you have the contact info for for Philippe, for um, for Andras and uh, Istvan. So yeah, with that, uh, I um, wish you all a good uh, evening if you're um, uh, in Europe or a good day. And we'll talk again next Wednesday. Bye bye. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Philippe. Thanks, Andras. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.